the resultant impact of the rebirth of the classical literature, classical theater, and logistical rhetoric of ancient Rome through the medieval studies of Cicero and his associated writings. Today, the English language can be an unusual, frustrating, and cruel, yet enchanting and seductive language, with several exceptions. However, it and its many concepts, structures, and definitions were not born in a day from nothing. It would take time and a language unspoken for centuries to give rise to the tongues we communicate with today, and a large contender of this modern-day communication system was a man with the name Cicero. Born in 106 BC, he grew up isolated, unfortunately, due to his semi-invalid status. However, in this isolation, he studied unendingly, giving him an educated status that would allow him to make something of himself when he grew up. He was told he could be anything, so he became a lot of things. He spent some time in the military under Sulla, but it wasn't much to his liking, so he left the military. And then he became a lawyer, and a pretty good one too. But then he made some enemies in the first triumvirate, so he left Rome for Greece. He came back later and decided to become a mix between a linguist and a public speaker. This lasted a good while, but then he made an enemy out of Mark Antony, so he left. Permanently. What I mean to say is he died in 43 BC. But now that you know who he is, let's talk about why you should know him. Let's keep this simple, alright? Technically, the Renaissance was indirectly caused by Cicero. Cicero also sent letters to his friend Atticus. During the Middle Ages, in 1350, Plutarch unearths one such letter and studies of the ancient world begin. A hundred years later, the humanist movement is born and the Renaissance is underway. But that's not all. Cicero's love of the stage saved the theater. Cicero loved theater and often compared it to his legal and political obligations. His love for the theater seldom showed in his writing, but he published an in-depth work with the help of Horace and Quintilian. Thanks to this extensive piece of literature, Roman plays would embrace a stage once more in centuries. During the Renaissance, rhetoric returns to its true form after centuries of theological influences. Cicero needed a more effective method of speaking that was more powerful and had greater influence over his audience. He then came up with his own form of rhetoric that followed under what was known as Ciceronian rhetoric and would be of even greater influence on rhetorical speaking than Aristotle was. Hundreds of years later, when these writings will be resurfaced, rhetoric jumped from theological reasoning to return once more as a logic-based method of speaking. In the end, Cicero was a legend among Romans. At least, to us he was. When it comes to today's politics, speeches, and even our day-to-day -day arguments, we can see Cicero's rhetorical devices, such as the tricolon crescents, at play, woven into our speech so intricately that speaking without them would feel weak and empty. It's simply too bad that only a select few know of his existence, and after all he has given us, it's simply just too bad.